Welcome back, guys. As I told you, it does get more interesting. So for those that didn't leave their seats, well done to you because you have absolutely been awesome this show. And I can tell, I can really tell when people have been tuned in and watching because I can tell from your involvement on the page and it's absolutely awesome today. So well done, great tens. Over to you again. Thanks, guys. Some interesting questions that you guys are putting. We're going to get to some of those questions now. But now we come to that time in the program when we're looking at possible careers in environmental and, ecolo in and ecology. What is interesting to th note, guys, is that you guys need to think about what you want to do in the future. The jobs that you probably want to do do not exist at the moment. So remember that the environment is a trop topical issue, lots of concern about changes in environment. So if I were you and I'm passionate about the environment and you love life sciences, you should seriously think about a career in environmental studies or environmental science. So what I'm going to spend over the next, I'm going to spend the next few minutes looking at possible careers that you could look at getting into grade 11 and before you start applying to these universities to secure your admissions. So lots of opportunities for you guys to look at. Let's look at possible career options for you guys. Right, so when we look at the environment, it provides many exciting, okay, provides many exciting, interesting, satisfying career choices that cover a range of fields and disciplines. And that's essentially what it is. It's not mundane. You're not limited to, to an office. You're not exclusively found on the field. And hence, you can, you, you, you can fluctuate between. And if you're passionate about what you want to do, guys, let's look at it. Okay, working in an environmental field is rewarding. And an environmental field is rewarding because you contribute to maintaining and conserving the lifestyle that humans need to survive. And yes, guys, the environment is something that we all need to look after. We could make it a career as well as we could make it important to, uh, to ourselves. So yes, why not earn some money from something that you enjoy? A career, is going to be a career in environmental science will definitely be something that you would enjoy. Okay. So when we look at environmental studies, there are two main pathways that you could choose. You could look at social environment careers or you could look at environmental science. We're going to look at each one of them and how these fields break up further. Right, so let's look at social environmental careers. Now, this would be a career that is centered on humans and their relation with the environment. And we, 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 can, we, we see that sometimes people are passionate about interacting with people, and hence you're not exclusively isolating yourself. You're not in the field. You're still interacting with people. And let's look at how you could do that. And there's some interesting opportunities. We live in a country that is rich in biodiversity, that attracts lots of tourists every year to our countries. We've got the big five that people will constantly visit our countries for. And yes, guys, here's an opportunity for you to get involved. Ecotourism. We could look at eco you could look at ecotourism or being a guide or a specialist in a specific area. Okay? And lots of money to earn, guys. And the most important thing is that you're going to be enjoying being in nature and, and interacting with the environment. Another option would be an environmental journalist. And if you read through most of the tabloids, you'll see that there's always a column on environment and changes in the environment. And yes, many of the, many of the TV channels cover documentaries, and you, you know the important documentaries, and you often watch them. And these would be, co so these would be covered by journalists, and hence you would go out and you would cover different stories, um, and that would be very interesting as well. You could also get involved in communities conservation and rural development and a rural development specialist. You could in, you could get back and you could get involved with community projects and you could develop greenhouses. You could develop uh, uh, plantations and that would mean that you again involved at, at a community level as well as developing communities. Very important part in developing the nation. You could also become an environmental education teacher, and the benefits of that, yes, guys, are coming to li mindset. You could also become an environmental lawyer. And if we think about how multinational companies need to protect themselves, they often need advice. And to be an environmental lawyer, you could then sit in, on a sit in one of these companies and advise them in terms of the, the protocol that they need to follow so that their projects are environmentally sustainable. You would need to know law very well so that you could, you could advise them accordingly. And hence, this could be a very good opportunity for you to get involved. So you could inv if you're passionate about law, you could look at environmental law as well. Okay. 
Right. The other strand would be environmental science career, and here we could look at these are careers that co that have to constantly deal directly with the environment, and here you're directly involved with in with the environment. Here you could look at possibly environmental manager or an environmental assessor. And these are people that go out and they will go out in the environment and before a major project, before building, before multi a massive building, a project comes up, these individuals will go into the area and they will assess the possible impact that that would have on the environment and you would need to advise them in terms of what they would need to do, whether this would be sustainable to, to protect, protect the environment or not. You could also become a landscape architect and obviously you'd need to, uh, you'd need a bit of architecture in that and obviously a good understanding of landscaping to enhance the natural beauty of the area you could become a nature conservation officer, and this would you could work in one of the big big game reserves in in, Af in South Africa or anywhere in the world. You could also become a specialist science in bio specialist scientist in biodiversity. And again, I mentioned how rich we are in biodiversity. There's lots of opportunities for you guys. Waste management or pollution controller could be another option, and hence we know that waste management becomes a very important issue as we go forward in terms of the, avail the availability of free uh, landfills, and hence we need to look at technology, and this would, this would be where you'd be playing a very important role as a waste manager and a pol pollution controller. We could also look at environmental engineering, and this would be to getting involved with mines, getting involved with companies to look at how different how you could engineer different things so that we can look at how sustainable uh, the future could be from an environmental point of view. Okay, I've prepared a few questions for you guys and very quickly we're going to go through this. I'm going to see if we have any good questions that you guys have posted. I'm going to take a few. Let's look at the first question that I've put up. Okay, so the table below shows the data of two food chains. Here we have a desert food chain and we have a savanna food chain. Okay. So the question number one, draw and label a pyramid of numbers for the, for the desert food chain. And this is out of five marks. Right, so, so we, we need to draw a food chain, a, a pyramid of the desert food chain. So this is what we're looking at. First, we need to identify the first trophic level, the second trophic level, the third trophic level, and obviously the fourth trophic level. So we're going to extend this page a bit. Right. And if you guys haven't seen a spotted eagle owl, I've put up an image for you. And remember that these are predatory birds, and obviously they would be right on the top in the food chain. So we've got to draw and label. So I'm going to extend the page slightly. So we can draw right here, guys. Okay. First trophic level, second trophic level third trophic level. I'm going to scroll up a bit. So we said 200 decaying leaves. So here it's going to be 200 decaying leaves. Okay. We then look at 50 beetles. two lizards and the last one was one spotted owl so we're going to call it one owl okay so you then call this pyramid of P pyramid of desert biome and that would be showing you the numbers okay and here we can clearly see the numbers of individuals in that food, food in that number pyramid and they decrease as we go up the pyramid go on to the next question this is quite an interesting question draw and label a pyramid of biomass for the savannah food chain use the mass given in the table to answer this question. Okay. When you have to draw a biomass pyramid, you'll have to look at the amount of energy available in each organism 
and multiply that by the number of organisms in that food chain. The acacia tree, if we look at the food chain, there's one acacia tree, so the biomass for that acacia tree would be, again, 250,000 grams. However, the caterpillars, each caterpillar weighs 200. There are 200 caterpillars, and each caterpillar weighs 4 grams, so we've got to multiply that by 200 to give us a total biomass of 800 grams. If we look at the African hoopoo, this is a bird, guys, and here we can see this is 5, and so we multiply that by 5, which is equal to 300 grams, and the fleas are 100 grams, and we multiply that by 100, and that would be 5 grams. These would this would give you the num this would give you the numbers available to draw each trophic level. And if we were to before we close, if we were to quickly draw this, we would get a representation very quickly, just so that I finish. That is what it would look like, guys. Before we wrap up for this afternoon, very quickly, we're gonna okay, and this is a mind map of what we've done. So. This is up on this website, and you guys can have a look at this. So we looked at bio, we looked at the biosphere during the first few lessons. We then went on to factors that affect the biosphere. We looked at the biotic factors, the abiotic factors. We then went on to looking at our energy flows through an ecosystem. We looked at food chains, trophic levels. We also looked at the nutrient cycle and the various cycles. So. Remember that when we look at the ecosystem, we cannot look at any factor by itself. All the factors are, inter are interrelated and they interact with each other. Stay, stay in touch, guys. You guys need to catch up. Look, look at these notes. Refer to these notes regularly. W what is important is that you guys will always need to refer to your notes and make sure that you, ma mind, make sure that you prepare mind maps, an excellent tool to prepare for when you're studying for your exams. Look at your notebooks, look at your textbooks, make your notes, guys. Highlight things that are important. Prepare these mind maps and refer to them constantly when preparing for your exams. From my side, enjoy the rest of your the afternoon and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you again. Thank you guys for such an awesome show. You guys are always great to be with. As you again said, remember, make notes, make nice, colorful notes, make mind maps, anything to help you learn. All of us are different. Remember that. So your learning is not other people's learning. So make sure that you always stick to what works for you so that you can pass and not work on other people's because other people may not pass and there you are following them. So make sure that you always stay true to what you believe in and what you can do to change anything that you may need to change. From me, guys, bye-bye. See you next time.